For those who may not know what Kalimo does, here's a brief introduction to what it does. As can be seen, it can change the texture on different objects after the scene's been rendered, but what's really cool about Kalimo is that when it changes the texture, it also changes the way that texture affected how the light bounced within the room and how the texture is seen through reflective and transparent materials, which makes it completely amazing and revolutionary to anyone that's used to making things in 3D. To use this incredible tool with the render, first we need to pick which materials we want to be retexturable later on in Klimo. So go here, click on the object to be made repaintable, then go to Material Lab, General, and make sure Repaintable has been checked for that material. We could also go over here to the Tree View and go to the material to be made repaintable, right click on it, and say Repaintable. This can also be done with multiple materials to make multiple materials repaintable at the same time. Or it could be done within the models. If we right click on the model in the tree view, go down to material and say repaintable. Another really important thing to keep in mind is that when the scene is exported to Kalimo, it will use the object's UVW coordinates. So if we have an object that has a solid color on it, here it might not show up that the UVW coordinates are bad, but when we actually apply a texture with a checkerboard pattern to it, we can then see if it does have proper UVW coordinates. So to check here and make sure it does have proper UVW coordinates, if we have the material pre-made, we can go over here to materials, drag it on over to add it, and then apply it to the object just like that. So in this case, it can be seen that every single box of the checkerboard is the same size, so this does have some pretty good UVW coordinates. If it didn't, then the checkerboards might be bunched up a little bit in certain parts of the object. And to make this material on our own, we can right click in materials, say new material. Now double click on the new material to apply it to the currently selected object. All we need is a basic material. Now we need to apply a checkerboard pattern here in the texture field. If we don't have a checkerboard pattern, it can be found within some of the example Thea scenes, which can be found by going to Help, Open, Data Folder, and going to Scenes, Material Editor, and Unbiased. Here we can just copy this and paste it to where the rest of our textures are, so we can easily click on the texture box and select it to use it here. Now it can be seen if the UVW coordinates are good, and this can be adjusted by left-clicking on it and adjusting the scale down here to get more or less boxes over the surface. Now I've checked and made sure that the UVW coordinates are good. Let's put back on the original texture. I want this texture to be repaintable, so I go to General. Yes, it is repaintable. In this scene, I've actually made the walls repaintable, the tablecloths repaintable, and each one of the pictures repaintable. The last step to do before rendering is to go to the Render tab and make sure this repaintable box has been checked. We also want to make sure we're using one of the unbiased methods, either TR1 or TR2, and have super sampling on Auto, None, or Normal. 
if it's set to auto in one of the unbiased modes, it automatically uses normal super sampling, which gives better quality but uses a little bit more memory than no super sampling. Now we can go to the dark room and press render. Here I've let this render for a little bit only to show that when it does render in the render, the textures that have been made repaintable will look gray. Don't worry about this because after it's been imported into Kalimo, it will look perfect. So after it's done rendering, stop the render, go over here to save image, and say save as Kalimo project file. Now give it a name and save it. In a little bit, this message will pop up asking if you want to open up Kalimo to start retexturing the current project. You can say yes. After it's open, as can be seen here, all the textures have been put on the proper objects in the proper way. Now we can start editing any one of these. So say I want to change out this pool picture with something else. Change texture. I can pick anything else and it will replace it with a new picture. To replace the texture with the color, uncheck enable, then place whatever color we might like on the object. In this situation, I do want a picture on there for the actual photo. So this can be extremely useful if, say, the client doesn't like the pictures in the art gallery that we made here. We can quickly change them out, no problem. We can also do the same with the walls. Change the color out. Or give the walls a texture. And the tiles can be changed. The position. The rotation. I can replace the paint with a wallpaper. Using the fine tiles, I can make it so that the wallpaper matches up perfectly over here, then have its position changed very easily and quickly. And I can do the same with the tablecloth. So let's say I want to have this texture on the tablecloth instead of the one it had. And I'll make it so that it's only tiled once. Having a nice black spot on the top then going to white near the edges. One thing I would like to show real quick here is that if I put this texture on the tablecloth it can be seen within the glass how much calculation is actually happening here within Kalimo. As I move this texture underneath the glass objects, it can be seen how within the glass objects, it's actually changing quite a bit of information within the glass. And it's all happening in real time. So now let's say I have these textures set up as another potential setup that the client might like. I can go to Save States Manager and say Add New From Scene, then give it a name right here. Then say Rename so I can keep track of which pattern it actually is. I'll also rename this one just to keep track of it better. Hit Rename. And now I can quickly change between what I had before by saying apply to scene and what I changed it to. So I will do the same to the walls. Now the new one from the scene. And I can change between the old one and the new one. Last one I'll do it for is this picture over here. 
which used to be the pool picture and and while I'm looking at the names here I should remind people to give the objects made repaintable good names so that it's easier to keep track of them here in the list for me I know that this picture over here was a pool picture but maybe a better name for it would have been right picture then I could have named this middle right middle left left picture Now let's rename it. Another way to add the new picture to the list here is to give it a new name. Then press enter. And it will automatically add the new texture that's been put on there to the list. So we can now quickly switch between them this way. Another cool feature is that Let's say we have a whole bunch of different textures we want to apply to a certain object. Like we want four different pictures here in this picture frame. Instead of just one different picture, we can say add new images. Go to the images we want to add. In this case, I'll add those two. And now they've been added, so I can now quickly apply them to the scene and switch between those as well. But that's not all. We can also save out every single combination of the different textures as saved out here into an easily accessible HTML file so that we can post this on a website and have the client access it through the internet. To do this, click on Save Combinations. Now pick a folder to save it in. In this case, I've already made a folder, which I'm going to save it in. And it's going to make a whole bunch of files within this folder, so I do highly recommend to make a folder beforehand. Give it a name, say save, pick whether we want high quality or low quality with a smaller file size. In this case, I'll say quality. Now pick either basic HTML or XML plus HTML. And it's now going to quickly go through and save out every single different combination of all the different materials within the scene. The one suggestion I would put here is that we should try to keep the different number of combinations to a minimum to make it so that it can save out all the different states as quickly as possible. The more combinations we have, the longer it will take. And the number of different combinations can quickly build up on each other because it's actually multiplying it by the number of combinations already there. So say we had 10 different combinations with the materials we had, then we have one more material with one other combination, we all of a sudden have 20 different pictures it has to save out instead of 10. So be careful to limit the number of combinations when going to save them out. And even though the number of combinations do expand in this way based on the combinations on the different objects it's still way way faster than re-rendering the whole picture so we can have basically like hundreds or thousands of different combinations of textures on the object rendered out in a few minutes where otherwise it would have taken days or months to render out that many different combinations so now it's done rendering, and I can say yes to open the folder it was put in. And as can be seen here, it actually did render out 16 different images because that's how many different combinations of textures there was. By double-clicking the HTML file, I can open it up here, and now easily switch between any of the different pictures that have been saved out. Now let's say we don't want every single combination saved out. We only want a couple pictures saved out. We can easily do that up here manually by saying save image. Then it will only save out the current state as reviewing it here. So I hope you have fun with that. Happy rendering.